Welcome to this edition of News Briefing for the FSB in Beds, Cams and Hearts. I'm Stephen Rhodes. Andrew Salou, he is the Conservative Member for South West Bedfordshire. He is also the Parliamentary Private Secretary to the Work and Pensions Minister. And when he came to our studios earlier, I started by asking him about the good news on the job front in his constituency. Yes, so on Monday I went to visit Honeytop Specialty Foods in Dunstable, already employing 900 people full-time. They want an extra 200 people uh, they're taking on before November this year. And they make crumpets, tortillas, wraps for the whole of UK, Europe, all the way around the world. Fantastic business, investing, doing all the right things. And they want those jobs to be fully available to local people. That's a really important point. So I'm thrilled about that and visited them on Monday afternoon. That is such good news for Dunstable because yeah. Dunstable used to be a very big employer. A lot of industry and then of course it all... That's right. Went and also up. we're told there are going to be an extra 550 jobs from the big Prologis site and the former Renault Trucks uh, site on, off Boscombe Road. And that has been developed on a speculative basis by Prologis. I think their first investment since the recession uh, was in Dunstable. Right. Because, you know, real vote of confidence in the future mm -hmm. of the town. Now, we have just seen the launch opening, uh, whatever you might like to call it, of the guided busway, which links up two of the biggest towns in your constituency. Well, three, Houghton. actually. I mean, Dunstable, Hatton Regis and Luton. Yeah. yeah, well, yes, Luton isn't in your patch, strictly no. speaking. Yeah. Now, there was a fear that when this guided busway was set up, and I had spoken to people about it, they said, yes, but everybody will just go to Luton. Mm. It's going to actually bring a lot of jobs into Dunstable and Houghton Regis, surely, because it's so accessible now. Well, if you take Honeytop Specialty Foods, um, there is a stop quite close to that business, and so clearly it will enable people to apply there. Um, I hope lots of Dunstable and Houghton Regis and Leighton Buzzard and uh, residents who live in the local villages between those three towns will also apply. But a lot of the businesses are, are pro it. And certainly in terms of helping Dunstablians get, and people in from Houghton Regis, to get to Luton Station, to go down to London, and to get to the airport, it's very good news. Now, businesses in the past, and to a degree still, in, in Dunstable do have a bit of a struggle. There's still a lot of empty shops there, more mm. than anybody would like. Mm. Um, what can you do as the member for the region to support small businesses and get them going in this area? Well, I think the best thing for Dunstable by a long way will be to get the Dunstable Northern Bypass built. The reason the, strop, the shops, I think, struggle in Dunstable some of the time is because of the traffic congestion in the mm -hmm. town. Once we've eased that up so you can get in and out of the town um, without difficulty, then I think people will come and shop um, in, in Dunstable in, in much larger numbers. We have to get the offer right, but I think it'll be a sort of virtuous circle as the yes. traffic eases up. Because at the moment it's just a big crossroads. There'll be more businesses that come and more yes. people will come into the town because there's a better offer there and they can get in and out more, more easily. So I think that is the single most important thing that can happen. Um, the bypass is advancing well. I'm expecting uh, construction to start next year. I had lunch with the developers yesterday who are putting 45 million pounds into, into building the bypass um, so that is all going ahead we just hope there's not a call in on the planning application for the houses north of north of Hatton Regis important to mention Leighton Buzzard as well I and mean, we've talked a lot about I was going to come Regis. to that <laughs> but you know there are growing businesses yeah. there as well which is also good and of course Leighton Buzzard is helped by growing businesses like BE Aerospace for example taking on a lot of extra people at the moment huge order book making the seats and the galleys for the Airbus you've got established businesses like Pledge Chairs fantastic range of chairs. In fact, I hope these might be pledge chairs made in Leighton Buzz, let's see, but if you want to support local business, you could do no worse than go to uh, pledge chairs. Finally, I mean, I've seen you at a lot of FSB events mm. and you are a great supporter of them and thank you very much mm. for that. But do you actually get something from those events when you talk to small businesses that you can then sort of take with you down south? Very much so. I mean, I get very enthused and excited when I see businesses doing well in my constituency, large uh, and small. I think we've had 300,000 new businesses start up over the last couple of years, which is really good. They are the lifeblood of our economy. We need a constant flow of people with entrepreneurial ideas starting new businesses. And it's really important that I listen to the business community. They tell me, you know, that their problems, their difficulties, what's helped them, you know, if governments occasionally get things right, um, so we can do more of that. So that's really, really important. I wrote to Central Bedfordshire Council a couple of days ago and I said how much of your procurement goes to small businesses and how small business friendly are you? There's a website that which the government has set up for local authorities to do. And we've also got pop-up shops. I'm not sure if you're familiar with pop-up yes, shops, Stephen. Yes. But we've got that happening both in Dunstable 
and in Leighton Buzzard. And I'm really, you know, all credit to both Dunstable Town Council and Leighton Lindsley Town Council. They've run with this idea. I took both town cl clerks up to uh, the local government department who were putting on a presentation about this. They've run with the idea and it's happening in both towns, on the market and in empty shops, which I think is fantastic. So good proactive stuff going on and you support the shop local campaign. Very I much. As well. I, but, it, you know, it's about local people. We need to put our, our purses and our wallets where our mouths are. You know, it's use them or lose them. You know, these businesses don't run on fresh air and enthusiasm. They need people to go in and support them. If people want a good range of small independent shops, go and spend money there. They have a great offer. You won't be disappointed. Andrew Salou MP. And that concludes this edition of News Briefing. See you again soon.